My name is Gene Sun, and I attended Walnut Hill from 2002 uh, to 2015. Uh, from 2002 to 2007, I was uh, an attender. Uh, I went to the Sunday night service called Core back then. I was serving as a youth pastor at another church, and uh, Walnut Hill was kind of like my community because uh, the church I was serving, I was small and didn't, didn't have any young adults. And so some of the impact that Walnut Hill has made on my life, our uh, community, I've met some of my best friends there. I attended a, an incredible small group. Um, and then from 2007 to 2015, uh, I also served on staff at Walnut Hill, uh, and that has made a huge impact on me. I got to serve with Clive and uh, Craig and Brian, among other uh, staff people there, um, and it really just shaped me as a pastor and leader. And so, yeah, that was that was incredible. Um, during my time at Walnut Hill, I also got to meet my wife, uh, and that was that was pretty awesome, too. Um, my prayer for Walnut Hill going forward uh, is that it would uh, remain uh, biblically sound, relevant, um, and just impactful to that community of Bethel and that surrounding area. Hi, I'm Barbara Sun. I first attended Walnut Hill in 2001 as a high school student going to youth group for the first time. And a few months later, I gave my life to Jesus. In college, I participated in the internship program at Walnut Hill, and after I graduated, I was on staff for a few years. I'm so grateful for that time in my life when I fell in love with Jesus, when I fell in love with his word, and when people poured into me. I'm so grateful for the community that surrounded me during that time. And now my prayer for you, for you Walnut Hill, is that you'll all fall more in love with Jesus each one of you, that you would grow in your love for him and you would overflow to others with that same love. My name is Bill Beatty, and uh, my family and I have been uh, worshiping at uh, Walnut Hill Community Church for the last uh, 32 years. I've been honored to uh, serve on the elder board and uh, chair it on uh, three occasions. And I love this church, and I love the men and women who, uh, who worship here. We were and continue to be attracted to Walnut Hill uh, for many reasons, but there are three that I would like to uh, mention uh, uh, at, this, at this time. Number one, a Walnut Hill Community Church ministry is solidly based on biblical spiritual growth and prayer and the spread of our Christian faith through local and worldwide missions. We believe Walnut Hill is called to grow our church community and support, of, support our missions as a key part of our strategy. Secondly, I'd mention that uh, Wanted Hill has encouraged the launching of uh, Pathways Danbury back in 1997 and the Jericho Partnership more recently in response to the needs of the at-risk uh, youth of Danbury and continue uh, as an important supporter of the Jericho ministry. Given the changing demographics of our city, uh, outreach to the at-risk community is an important ministry uh, and has um, uh, great impact on our town. Number three uh, that I'd like to mention uh, uh, is at uh, Walnut Hill, and this is important. Walnut Hill has provided a loving community in which to worship and has demonstrated the love of Jesus in good times as well as in uh, times of grief. Um, we have caref uh, joyfully uh, uh, celebrated the, uh, the wedding of one of, uh, one of my daughters uh, within the uh, Walnut Hill Community uh, Church uh, Ministry, but uh, have also uh, uh, celebrated the life of my wife who passed away in 2020. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, really uh, found the, the, uh, the love and the uh, uh, communal relationships of Walnut Hill Community Church, a wonderful, wonderful asset throughout the years. Over the next uh, 40 years, uh, I see uh, uh, Walnut Hill Community Church uh, spirit-filled uh, uh, with believers actively growing our support of local and world missions via ongoing prayer, uh, loving service, and generous giving. And I thank you 
for this opportunity to share this with you. Hello, Walnut Hill family. I'm Charles Galda, and my family attended Walnut Hill from 2006 to 2018, when we moved from Connecticut. Along with so many transformative experiences we had at Walnut Hill, I served as an elder and taught the word-by-word -word Bible study John and Lynn Holbrook started. I am so excited to celebrate 40 years with you. 40 years of Walnut Hill Community Church faithfully serving our Lord and His kingdom. And I testify personally of how God used Walnut Hill to change me, my family, and the trajectory of our lives. As a result of our experiences of Walnut Hill and connections at Walnut Hill, I left my corporate job in 2018 and we moved to New Hampshire. And today I lead Vision New England. Uh, some of you may know it as the Evangelistic Association of New England. It's a 130-year-old network of 1,000-plus ministries who want to see New England transformed with the love of Jesus. And we accelerate that by connecting leaders and churches in targeted events where they share, learn, and collaborate to make disciples, to do justice, and to impactfully share Jesus. All things close to the heart of Walnut Hill. Walnut Hill gave me a broader view of orthodoxy that treats the minors as minors, without which I couldn't lead an interdenominational ministry. Being with all of you gave me a bigger view of what God is doing and our call, including, but also beyond our local communities and specifically in New England. Our time at Walnut Hill convicted me of the call to do justice as something bigger than personal integrity, but the way God describes in the Bible to right the wrongs of our communities and society, and he built a desire in me to help the New England church do it. Walnut Hill built the relationships that led me to Vision New England, who all still play integral roles in our lives and in leading the church of New England. We're so grateful to friends like Adam, Brian, Craig, Victoria, Becca, John Dishinger, Clive, my fellow elders, and the Word by Word class. I'd have never heard God's call without all of you. God is doing something different in New England today than ever in our lifetimes. And you all, Walnut Hill, are part of it and critical to it. My prayer for Walnut Hill is that God will continue to make his face shine upon you and bless and guide your path as you continue to make disciples who disadvantage themselves to do justice, reflecting Jesus's love to share Jesus and transform our world. God bless you, Walnut Hill, and thank you so much for your partnership and the impact you have on our lives. Hi, we're Clay and Joy Norman, and we've been part of Walnut Hill since the fall of 1985. When we first walked through the door of Walnut Hill, we were really excited about being part of the family that was here. We were welcomed immediately. It was a great opportunity for us to get uh, involved and to hear the biblical teaching that was uh, presented every Sunday morning. It was Tom Northcott that invited me to teach an adult Sunday school class with him, and that was early on. And since then, both of us have been involved in many different roles within Walnut Hill. And it's that involvement that has kept us engaged, and it's just been an exciting part of our journey to be able to learn and to serve within Walnut Hill. Our prayer for Walnut Hill is that they, that the church would continue to stay true to the Word of God and continue to preach to the Word of God day in and day out. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey Walnut Hill, how's it going? Eric Reardon here. I am recording this down in Orlando, Florida, where I work at the headquarters of Crew. Um, and uh, yeah, so happy 40th anniversary. That's pretty exciting. Um, <clears throat> I attended Walnut Hill some, from since I was born. So that was 1991, uh, back when um, I think Joe Elizenis was the pastor back then uh, and was for most of my childhood uh, up through um, Clive's uh, tenure there. And um, so I stayed in Walnut Hill for, yeah, probably the first 23 years of my life um, through college. Um, and so as I look back, like one favorite memory or one thing, I remember many things about my time in Walnut Hill. Um, 
but I remember going to a Walnut Hill event, and I regret to say that I don't remember what the event was, and I don't even remember what happened at the event because this was very early on in my childhood. I got baptized at Mountain Lake some point after this, um, but I, I was um, very young. And I remember going to this event and coming home, and I just felt the weight of the truth of Christianity. And I thought to myself, if this is really true, I sort of zoomed, zoomed back out and had an eternal perspective on my life. And I thought, there's nothing else in life that ultimately really, really matters um, other than God and his kingdom and eternal realities. And so when I thought about that, I, I knew I knew that I was kind of in uh, experiencing something out of the normal for me uh, to just be seeing that clearly, to have that insight. But I knew that that was true. And so I remember I got down on my knees in my bedroom after this event at Walnut Hill. And I prayed this prayer, said, God, take me, make me and break me. I am yours. You can take my life, do whatever what you want to do, make me into whatever you want to make me in whatever ways I need to be broken on your behalf and changed and feel free to do it. And um, <clears throat> so I prayed that at, uh, at a very young age. And um, I know it was the ministry and impact of Walnut Hill that ultimately the Lord used to bring me to that point. And uh, I wish I could tell you more about what the event was or how I got there. But, um, but yeah, since then, um, uh, the Lord has kept me in the grip of grace ever since. And uh, so, yeah, I am and have been blessed to have uh, Walnut Hill uh, supporting me um, as a missionary here with crew for um, I've been on staff for um, yeah about eight years now. So that's incredible. Yeah. Um, in one sentence, my prayer for Walnut Hill comes. It just what came to mind when I thought about it was. Over the next 40 years, I thought of uh, Philippians 1, um, where Paul talks about his gratitude and his thankfulness for everything, for all of the, the depth in the church, the partnership in the gospel. And uh, he just prayed for them for more and more, you know? He prayed more and more knowledge and depth of insight. Um, and uh, that their love would abound more and more. And so it was like all of these great things are happening in this church. And Paul was just like, I just want more of those great things. So I know what kind of church this is. I, I know the leadership uh, there. And I'm confident of your love of God in the direction of this church. And I just pray that you guys would just keep, you know, as Vicki used to, or maybe still does sign her emails, uh, keep going. You know, I just uh, pray for more and more, more yellow flowers, more ministry, more disciples, more kingdom growth. And uh, so that would be my prayer for Wanna Hill over the next uh, 40 years. Take care, guys. God bless. Hey, everybody. My name is Fabricio. Uh, I've been attending Wanna Hill from 2014 until fall of 2020 when I moved into college. One of my favorite memories about Wanna Hill is being able to serve in the kids ministry uh, with a group of second graders and seeing their faith grow as they spend time learning about Bible stories, uh, doing all these crafts and games, and just seeing their love for Jesus grow uh, throughout all their years. And my prayer for Walnut Hill is to see the next, my prayer for Walnut Hill is to see the next generation of kids and youth grow closer to God and fall in love with Jesus and share his good news throughout New England, America, and the rest of the world. First of all, uh, I do want to say that I praise God for what he has done there in, in your church these last 40 years. You know, sometimes uh, you, you probably don't appreciate it so much. When you're close to something, uh, the changes are incremental. But when you're gone for a while and you come back and you see this, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Almost like planting a tree, and you come back and what in the world's happened here? So, <laughs> when I come back to to Brookfield, to, you know, to Walnut, it's just whew, I can't believe it. But I pray and I praise God for that, and look forward to what He's going to do in the future. In the early days, you know, we had to set up 
every Sunday when we had a, a covered van that we hauled around, a trailer, and we put all everything, the baby beds and the books and all the uh, in literature and even chairs. And we'd have to, at the end of the service, put everything back in the box, take it to where it could park it, and then when we got ready to start the service, we'd come back put everything up again. And uh, Francis and my wife and I at the time were in charge of the nursery. Uh, or setting it up. So I remember setting up baby beds. My Lord, you know, uh, every Sunday we set up baby beds and get ready for kids. But, you know, it, it was uh, work, but not really. It was fun. But it was sure nice when we finally got our, well, of course, we, Francis and I never got to see uh, our own building. We left before uh, we we moved into our property, but it was still fun setting up <laughs> every week. Hello, Walnut Hill family. We're Greg and Shelley Diedrich, and we first started attending Walnut Hill back in 1984, maybe early 85. It was the first Sunday that Doug Meraki candidated. And we were there for 10 years. We went through Doug, and then we were on the search committee to bring in Joel Eidsness and in the early formative years. And now we're back for a second chapter. We've kind of re-nested in the last couple of years and so glad to be uh, a regular part of, of church life. We, it is unbelievable what the Lord has done, yet not surprising at all that this, um, that Walnut Hill is 40 years celebrating. Wow. Back in the 80s, uh, Doug Dry was the youth pastor and I was one of the youth leaders. And so I had the privilege of being part of some of your leaders today, which are Adam DePesquale, Craig Mowry, and Brian Mowry. And little did we know what seeds the Lord was planting way back in these young men mm. that now are leading the church. There's nothing that gives me greater joy than to be able to see what the Lord was doing back then for his purposes for now. Um, Walnut Hill is, you know, it doesn't surprise me after 40 years because this church had such a strong foundation, biblically, mission-orientedly, or mission-oriented. Um, the people that have served were um, committed and um, had such a servant's heart. God was doing something amazing in New England, and now that we see almost the fullness of it, I know there's more to come, mm -hmm. and um, God's not done with this yeah. church yet, and it's very, very exciting to still be somewhat part of it. Yeah, and you know what that means, you being the youth leader back then, we have some serious videotape yes, of we the do. leaders, so <laughs> if you're not nice to us, we're breaking it out at a church-wide <laughs> event, and you yeah. guys will be embarrassed. So. Yeah. But one of the things I always reflect on is one of the things not known to many people today is the early struggles of the church. Mm -hmm. We faced many uh, challenges. Uh, the enemy did not want this church to survive and tried to snuff it out early. Mm -hmm. And the church, uh, the people that founded it were faithful. They persevered, they kept going, and, they, uh, and as a result, what we see around us now is the result of that early work and standing on the shoulders of those people. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about that, is that it was God's hand on it, as Shelley mm -hmm. said. And what that gives me hope for is we look to the future, wherever God is leading, it's like the Israelites in the Old Testament. They would always go back and remember what God had done to bring them to this point, to build their faith, to say, he's going to take us yeah. into the right place. And so we are confident that the vision and, and the leading of the Lord in the future, that he will lead us just like he has in the past. And we're excited to be a part yes. of it. So thanks for uh, inviting us to join into this celebration. We love you all. God bless. Hello, my name is Haley Hills, and I first came to Walnut Hill as a summer intern in the summer of 2020. And then I came back in the summer of 2021 as a full-time resident, which is part of the leadership development program here that seeks to train, to equip, and release leaders to serve the Church of New England and beyond. Now, one of my favorite memories here is working with Kids Camp in 2020, and the specific Kids Camp was really unique. Uh, and that was because all the years prior, it was done in person, and now we had to adapt and shift to being online. And now I remember coming to day four, which is the big call to ask kids to commit and surrender their lives to the Lord. And as a team, we were praying, and I was surrounded by youth and amazing adults and volunteers 
that were so dedicated to seeing the Lord work in these kids' lives. And as we prayed, we asked the Lord to be in the lives of these kids, to move and do what he does best. So later that day, the Lord did move and several kids either gave their lives for the first time or recommitted their lives. And we were able to move in homes in a way that we really never were able to do before. We were reaching in homes with kids being with their parents and their siblings and their guardians and facilitating dialogue about the Lord Jesus Christ and what it means to be in relationship with him. It was an amazing experience and a blessing to be with these people and to see the Lord so generously move and minister. So as Walnut Hill steps into the next 40 years, I pray that they would grow in their love for the Lord, that they would continue to learn how to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to build relationships with one another and Jesus across all cultures and backgrounds. Thank you. Greetings to you all at Walnut Hill and congratulations on this wonderful celebration. And this comes from Marguerite and I'm Enslin living in South Africa, our own country. We were members at Walnut Hill for about 11 years until we retired in 2009. Joining an evangelical church like Walnut Hill was rather foreign to our upbringing and traditions, coming from a very traditional, conservative and reformation-oriented church in South Africa. Mm -hmm. All glory to our Lord and with gratitude towards Bill Beatty for drawing us to Walnut Hill. That started a major new phase in our spiritual journey and culminated in the privilege of becoming a part of the elder group. The teachings of Joel Eisner mm -hmm. and Clive Calver, oh, yes. the many Bible studies and the prayer ministry led us to a much better understanding of the working of the Holy Spirit and what it truly means to be followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I guess I personally cherish too many favorite memories. Uh, in the first place, I need to mention the Roaring Lambs, a lively group of artists I was invited to soon after becoming a member. I learned about much more than the art of painting from precious friends like Betty Christensen, Kathy Beatty, AJ Picard, Marge Melwitz, and so many others. We had such wonderful um, times that we shared um, with, with our paint and with the Lord. Um, we were artists in the quiet, but we roared for Jesus Christ. It also was a wonderful challenge to be involved at the informal Saturday evening service called the Areopagus. Attendees were free to ask the speaker any question from the Bible. Another valuable experience for us was hosting a home group of a butley, motley bunch <laughs> for the time we attended the church. It was a process of learning to share in the nitty gritty of the lives of a dozen or so best friends. God gave us 11 years at Walnut Hill to grow towards more mature Christ followers. We praise his name. I praise his name for this wonderful, wonderful gift. And now our prayer for Walnut Hill for the next 40 years and beyond is that the greater Danbury, New England, and in foreign countries will continue to be greatly impacted by the Walnut Hill Ministries under the leadership of the current three musketeers <laughs> and Vicky and uh, bringing the kingdom of the Lord to our world. We greet you now in the name of our Lord and with many fond memories and, and uh, all our blessings. blessings. Amen. Bye. Hi, Walnut Hill Community Church or as I used to know it, Grace Community Church. Congratulations on 40 years. My name is Amy Nichols, but some of you may know me as Amy Holbrook. My parents are John and Lynn Holbrook and they were founding members of Walnut Hill. So when I was asked to make this video, I just had a lot of memories come flooding back and a lot of thankfulness for Walnut Hill and what it has meant to me and to my family. 
I was 10 when Walnut Hills started. And again, at that time it was Grace Community Church. And it was just so fun. We had, I had a lot of friends right away. And the thing that meant the most to me at Walnut Hill was the youth group. Doug and Beth Dry did a phenomenal job growing us relationally and growing us spiritually. And the friendships that I formed in that youth group are some of my best friends today, even 40 years later. So I'm very thankful for Walnut Hill and the platform that it gave me as a young teenage girl to figure out what I believe spiritually in a safe place, to have a lot of fun, to have some great friends. And the parents of those friends were also really instrumental in my life. The Deepa Squalls, the Stevens, the bosses, they were all people that had a huge impact on me. The Averys, the Lynx, I could go on and on. And it gave us a safe place to be teenagers. So we had a ton of fun. When I was in high school, we met in our barn, which was really fun. It was crazy, the things that we used to do. So I'm most thankful for the experience of the youth group growing up and the foundation it gave me to um, continue in my faith throughout the rest of my life so, thus far. I'm also really thankful for just the presence of Walnut Hill and its people uh, through the hardest times in the life, the lives of the Holbrooks, Walnut Hill has been there. Um, I remember when my dad's factory burned down and I came home from college and it was time to help clean up. I think it was April. It was time to help clean it up. We didn't have the money to bring in a company to clean up the mess from the factory that had burned. And I remember arriving at the factory and it looked like little ants crawling all over the factory. And it was people from Walnut Hill that were coming to help just give up their time to help in this dirty, burned out shell of a building. And I felt so loved. Um, even to this last summer when my dad died, I cannot tell you the incredible presence and gift that Walnut Hill was to us from the food to the prayers to the service, Walnut Hill has been a constant place um, of grace for my family. And I am so thankful for it. And I wish you 40 more upon 40 more upon 40 more years. Congratulations, Walnut Hill. Happy 40th birthday, Walnut Hill. Congratulations. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity for me to express my gratitude of the church, Walnut Hill. I have attended Walnut Hill since 2017 when I came back from Hong Kong after being burned out from the fashion industry. I came back, um, I was lost. I didn't know what to do for my life going forward. I knew that I didn't want to go back to the fashion industry, but I didn't really know what was next. So I came to Walnut Hill just thinking about um, pursuing God and to learn more about prayer, to learn more about the Bible and who God is. But of course, God always surprises us. I met Neil and Eva through our encounters and discipleship. They just poured their love onto me and sort of like started to reconstruct my identity. In one of the conversations I had with them, they suggested that I um, perhaps I could try to work as an intern at One Out Hill. And I was really excited for that opportunity. And I'm so gracious that the church had given me that opportunity of six months really exploring and witnessing how does ministry look like. And I had the privilege to work under Pastor Victoria in those six months. We, uh, I saw her pray for people. I saw her lead Alpha with Anna May, an amazing team uh, um, during the time of Alpha. Just, just, it just really touched my heart and saw the power of loving people one person at a time and during it was also during that time God started to speak to me very loudly clearly about my journey into the seminary once again Wanat Hill stepped up not only 
have provided and supported me financially, which is so amazingly important as a seminarian trying to go through school. And but at the same time, they've also uh, provided me with mentors like Pastor Victoria, Lucy Hilton, and Pastor Craig. These people have been so instrumental along the way to help me and guide me throughout my journey. And there's so many other countless names. If I haven't mentioned you, I'm sorry, but you know who you are. You will, I am forever grateful of who you are and all those supporters who have supported me throughout the years. Um, I'm just so grateful. My prayer for Will Not Hill going forward is that may God continue to bless you, to cause his face to shine upon you, to give you grace because the work that you have done has been so instrumental. I bless you, Will Not Hill, to flourish another 40 and plus 40 years. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Laura and I came to Walnut Hill, I think it was August of 2005. It was the same year Clive came. And uh, we have so many great memories of the church and so many ways that um, it has helped us grow. Uh, but um, one of the things that I remember very early on was the Rehoboth fundraiser, which was the goal was to raise uh, it was close to $10 million in 52 days. And uh, Clive was a big believer in meeting with people and eating with them. So he would have three and sometimes four meals a day, two lunches, a breakfast, sometimes two breakfasts, a lunch and a dinner. I think he put on 22 pounds or something in 52 days. <laughs> um, but I remember as we were getting close to the end, Neil Tan, who I believe at the time was chairman of the elders, um, and they weren't really announcing where they were. They were just, you know, they're going to have a big reveal. And I asked Neil Tan if he thought we were going to make it. And uh, you may recall, if you were there too, they were doing a, a devotional at the time, a 52-day devotional. I don't remember if it was Alive in the Spirit or something different, but it was very much uh, centered around allowing the Holy Spirit to, to change us and transform us. So I asked Neil this question. I said, do you think we'll make it? And he said, the only determinant of whether we make it or not is how much people change during this time, how, how much of a deeper surrender they have. He said, I see real evidence of people changing and being shaped by the Spirit. So, yes, I think we're going to make it. And um, sure enough, when uh, they did the reveal, we, I think we exceeded our goal uh, of, of fundraising. And that's how we built the expand of the sanctuary and we did the Sunday school area and the offices. I think we gave a million dollars away to missions, uh, very consistent with the, the core uh, calling of the church. Um, and, and as for the future, I, I think it relates very much to that. Um, when I look here in uh, Acts 2, verse 42, uh, the, the church had just started, and there had been 3,000 added to the church on the very first day of the church. And it says, They joined with the other believers and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. And that's how we change. That's how we are transformed by, by God, but through devoting ourselves to the Word, to learning the word, to fellowshipping with each other, encouraging one another, and to prayer. And if we keep doing that, that's my prayer, that we have a deeper surrender to Christ, that we keep the main thing the main thing. And, uh, and I want to see, uh, see what the Lord does for the next 40 years. Hi, my name is Laura Kennedy, and my husband and I, Jim, and I came to the church in 2005 with our four kids. One of the things that I have always loved about Walnut Hill is you never have to wonder if there's something you can do to help. There is a place for everybody to become engaged wherever they want to. Uh, so we took it easy the first few months, but then we started getting involved. And I was able to uh, help with the drama team and the worship team. Got to sing in the choir with the Sartans. That was wonderful. And help with the Christmas plays. But then after we'd been here for mm, maybe a, a year and a half or so, our pastor at the time, Clive Calver, asked from the pulpit, who will help with Sunday school? We need people to help with the children's department. And I had taught Sunday school for many years and loved it. So I 
jumped over to Sunday school and have been teaching 56ers or fifth and sixth graders ever since. So probably 14 years now, I've been able to be in there with Greg Flower, who is the pastor of that area. I love those kids. It is the only time probably that you'll see me get competitive is when I'm playing four square with the 56ers. We have a, a really good time with that. We also teach the Bible. <laughs> so uh, Walnut Hill is, is a wonderful place for families to come and singles and people who are wondering where they can belong. There's just something for everyone at Walnut Hill and I really appreciate that about our church. Hi Walnut Hill, my name is Matt McDonald and from 2002 to 2015, I attended Walnut Hill. In 2002, I was in sixth grade and Pastor Craig was the middle school youth pastor. So that is, actually is going back pretty far. I left in 2015 to pursue a full-time ministry position as a chaplain at a private Christian school in Virginia. And the most formative years for me at Walnut Hill were probably 2012 to 2015. I'd gone to the elder board and talked to them about how I had been drawn to full-time ministry but I wasn't quite sure where my strengths lay. So I was able to be mentored by Dr. Clive Calver and Pastor Brian Prue and Pastor Gene Sun. And under their mentorship and spiritual wisdom, I was able to find some of the things that I was good at that the Lord just hadn't developed in me yet, but that he would use Walnut Hill to do that. And so I get to teach the gospel to students and teachers every single day. And being in Virginia has been a wonderful experience, but Walnut Hill was the place that gave me the first um, opportunities to do that sort of thing. And so, you guys, I hope that you are still investing in people and raising up leaders. Um, it's amazing exactly what could happen when you are faithful to the Lord and to his promises. And as you stay a collective whole, united with the same vision to spread the gospel, not just from the pulpit, but by using the people, I think that the Lord will continue to do great things among you. So my prayer is that you mentor and be mentored by the people around you, spreading spiritual wisdom and advice to those who need it. Greetings from Carson City, Nevada. We are Mike and Jan Boss. God moved us from Southern California to the Northeast back in 1979. We were told that we were relocating to a spiritual wasteland. We finally found a solid church down in Black Rock Congregational, but it was almost a one hour, one way drive each Sunday. And uh, it was difficult to really become a part of that church family. But we did meet up with other from the, uh, uh, that were making that same trek from the greater Danbury area. And so we began to meet Sunday evenings together to see if God would use us to maybe start building a church up in the greater Danbury area. That group became the beginnings of what would become Walnut Hill Community Church. When we started this group way back uh, then, we were in our 30s with young children. We had never started a church before, uh, and, and, but God was faithful to our family and to that small group on Sunday nights. He's always been faithful to this church. He's provided what we needed at every turn, and we trust that he will continue to do just that for you as you move ahead. As that little Bible study met on those Sunday evenings, we began dreaming of actually becoming a church. We came up with four foundational principles on which to base this new church. Number one was that the Bible's inerrancy in its original form would be the basis for preaching and teaching. Number two, that the church would be missions oriented. The third principle was that a children's and youth program would be vital. Number four was that there would always be a welcoming, friendly environment. Those four principles was the basis of a great church growing. And we pray that in the next 40 years, you will continue to hold on to those principles God will bless you immensely. We loved being at Walnut Hill and we love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, Walnut Hill family. My name is Neil Tan, and it is a great honor to celebrate the church's 40th anniversary with you. 
Together with my family, we have attended Walnut Hill for over 30 years. I thank God for the huge impact Walnut Hill has had on me and my family. The church was our spiritual and extended family ever since we arrived in this country from England many years ago until our recent relocation to Southern California. Our three children grew up in the children and youth ministries, and I'm deeply grateful for the staff, volunteers, and friends who loved on them and grounded them in the scriptures. And today, by God's grace, they are all walking with the Lord, and they are in turn raising our eight grandchildren to love and follow Him. Having served in many facets of ministry and over many years at Walnut Hill, small groups, membership class, marriage mentoring, eldership, and executive pastor, to name a few, I have the humble privilege of seeing a 360-degree view of God's amazing goodness and faithfulness. Allow me to share one of my favorite memories. In the church's 40-year history, there have been eight senior or lead pastors, including, of course, Adam, Brian, and Craig today. I have the privilege of knowing all of them, and I was involved in the transition of senior leadership on two occasions. God led the right leader at the right time to minister to His church. They kept the main thing to be the main thing. Through their leadership under the guidance of the elders and with the support of the congregation, the Lord has grown Walnut Hill from a small group of founding families to today's multi-campus setting. We exercise daring faith acted out in sacrificial worship, prayer, fasting, serving and giving. It is indeed a joy for me to be part of this journey. And so, as you look forward to the next 40 years, permit me to encourage you to continue to step out in faith, for God is good and faithful. I believe that the Lord desires more spiritual transformation, more yellow flowers, deeper Christ-likeness, and greater kingdom impact. To use a serving analogy, my prayer is that you will see the waves of God at work and write them as you love and serve Him, knowing that you are carried by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may you be blessed by the words of the Lord to Joshua to be strong and courageous, and by the words of the Apostle Paul to fight the good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith. Amen. Hello, Walnut Hill. My name is Peter Brown, and my wife Maddie and I attended Walnut Hill from 1997 to 2009. What a joy and what a blessing it was to be part of a church that not only allowed us to grow and mature spiritually, but to also experience a church that was growing both in numbers and in size. We were fortunate to be there uh, while the church was expanding and the new worship center was being constructed. Shortly after the construction was completed, I had the opportunity to renew or reaffirm my baptism in the baptismal tank. What an exhilarating experience it was to rise out of those waters on Easter Sunday morning like Jesus rose from the grave. Some of the ministries that I was involved with at Walnut Hill during my stay were the small group ministry, uh, helping to grow and expand that ministry that Jim Solomon had started and, and grown so beautifully. I was also uh, able to be a part of the local and global outreach teams, and then ultimately uh, be a part of a ministry that grew out of Walnut Hill called Servant Hands. It was a ministry that was started by Drew Overpeck and Ted Heisinger, uh, which enabled folks uh, to go on short-term mission trips. My job was to equip them, to uh, train them in the do's and don'ts of uh, going on short-term mission trips and to how to be a godly representative of Walnut Hill Community Church. It was also my responsibility to manage all the logistics, the 
flight arrangements, the ground transportation, the uh, meals, the agendas, the um, lodging, um, in conjunction with planning with the uh, our global ministry partners at each location. It also allowed me the opportunity to participate in some of those short-term mission trips to Nigeria and to Costa Rica, to Eastern Europe, and ultimately to the Great Lakes region in Africa, Rwanda, Burundi, and Congo. Some of those ministries that I was involved with allowed me to mature and grow into a position where I decided to uh, go into full-time ministry to be a pastor. I had been pastoring churches in the United Methodist Church denomination since 2011 and currently pastor two churches here in the foothills of Western North Carolina. My prayer, oh, one other thing, and I'm over time, but one of the greatest joys I had at Walnut Hill were being part of the musicals that were uh, managed by Steve and Heather Sarton. Uh, to go through the rehearsals and the drills, uh, especially the, the dancing, I just could not get the steps right, and Heather would just keep pushing and pushing, and I would be getting frustrated and frustrated. But then I saw the end result and how amazing uh, she was and how talented Steve was uh, bringing out the best in, in all of us. My prayer for you all at Hill as you uh, begin your next 40 years and beyond uh, is to go with uh, the blessing of your leaders, uh, Brian, Craig, and Adam. Um, pray for them. Uh, ask for God's blessing and anointing on their lives and, and on their ministry. Uh, ask God to provide them the vision and the direction and the guidance uh, of how he would have Walnut Hill uh, grow and expand and be a bright, shining beacon, uh, not only in the Danbury, Bethel area, but throughout the world. God bless you, Walnut Hill. Thank you for what you did for me, and thank you for this opportunity. Greetings, Walnut Hill Community Church. I am so excited to be able to celebrate with you 40 years. God has used Walnut Hill in amazing ways over the past 40 years, and I pray that he will continue to do that. My name is Phil Smith, and my wife Becca and I and our family uh, were a part of the Walnut Hill family from 1988 until 2011. Part of that time as members, part of that time on staff, and part of that time actually sent out as missionaries uh, from Walnut Hill. There's so much that I would like to say today uh, about how God has used Walnut Hill, but I'm gonna narrow it into two areas. So the first is community. We learned at Walnut Hill what it means to be a part of this body of Christ, what community means. Um, whether it's through a small group, I won't mention your names, but where we laughed together, cried together, shared vulnerably with each other. We, we were bearing one another's burdens as we went through difficult times, whether it's that or the Brazilian congregation that I got to be a part of and that community or fellow staff members or board members. God taught us, um, like, like Paul says in Romans, 5, Romans 12, verse 5, he says we belong to each other as the body of Christ. And we learned what that belonging to each other means. The second thing that we learned from Walnut Hill is service. Kind of this non-negotiable part of following Jesus Christ is serving others. And so it's serving others within the community, we learned that, but also serving others outside of our community, outside of the congregation, if you will, in the local community or around the world. It's a non-negotiable part of following Jesus. We don't opt in or opt out, and we learned that. And that led us on an incredible journey, which took us 
from corporate world to staff of, of Walnut Hill to a trajectory that landed us over in Rwanda. It was all a result of the brothers and sisters at Walnut Hill Community Church. Um, and I would say about that, that, that serving is messy, uh, it's inconvenient, it takes commitment, um, it takes risk. And we learned all of those things and man, we are so thankful. We would never change a day of what happened to us as we left and went to Rwanda and all that's in that. Uh, so what's my prayer for you guys? Number one, that you will learn how to engage in community and what that means to actually be brothers and sisters together. And then number two, importantly, that you will take the risks to allow God to change the trajectory of your lives and impact others as a result of that. God bless you all. That's my prayer for you guys. Have a wonderful 40th celebration. Hello, friends at Walnut Hill. It's so great to have an opportunity to speak to you. Uh, my name is Rich Rairden, and I'm a former chairman of the Elder Board serving two terms. Uh, my wife and I, Jan, were present at at Walnut Hill from 1989 to 2015. So that spanned in about 26 years. Uh, Jan had a, a quite exciting and fruitful ministry in, with children, and I had uh, opportunities to not only teach, but also to be involved in the leadership work on the board. Uh, as we think about those years, there are many ministries that come to mind, and. Uh, over 26 years, it's hard to single out one or two that make the most sense. But for us, uh, one of the highlights, I suppose, would have to be that our children came to faith at Walnut Hill and were baptized at Mountain Lake, which was a special occasion for us. Um, I also had the opportunity to serve two terms as chairman of the board, and one of those was during the first building campaign. Uh, that campaign, uh, was filled with uncertainty. We didn't know whether we were gonna get legal permission to be able to build. Uh, we had to pray through that and work through a number of legal hoops to be able to make that happen. But the Lord was faithful and opened up the opportunity for us to build. Uh, but then we had a financial uh, question that had to be resolved. I remember standing in front of the congregation at Rogers Park and saying to them, we have a $25,000 deficit in our budget and we can't go to a bank or to a lending agency and get, per, get a loan uh, without eliminating that deficit. So we put that out to the congregation and the Lord was quite faithful in the response. And within a couple of months, we had completely eliminated that deficit. So that was a memory that just stands out to me uh, about the Lord's faithfulness and the way he works in our lives to be able to accomplish what he's intending to do. I think uh, another memory that occurs to me uh, was a very important campaign when we kicked off the funding for that first building. And John and Lynn Holbrook uh, were the uh, chairman and, and, and uh, uh, sponsors for a banquet uh, that we held to begin raising money. And uh, I, I was really surprised at how successful that went and was quite pleased. One of the things that I recall is that the Holbrooks had selected a song for us to sing. It was sort of a theme song. And that song was, uh, May Those Who Come Behind Us Find Us Faithful. And the Lord answered that prayer as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, our generation and that leadership team was faithful in accomplishing what the Lord had called us to do, and that uh, we were able to ultimately get that building built and uh, so I also remember the very first Sunday of worship in that building. And uh, the song that the congregation sang was, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And it's truly that was, that was a, a, an example of the Lord's faithfulness to us as a congregation through the years, struggling with whether or not we could get this building built. And to be able to occupy it was just a great praise and an opportunity to see how much the Lord had worked in our congregation. Another memory that I, that, I re, that I recall during that period was a time in which the elders began to pray 
about the building itself. And after the building was constructed, we went around to every room and prayed and dedicated that building to the Lord. So that now when you are occupying those rooms, I sense that the Lord's covering is over you uh, because that was a time in which we utilized a, uh, the opportunity to pray for the future generations that were coming to our church. I, I recall us uh, saying to the congregation, uh, we don't know who is coming to our church, but we know that people are on the way. We know that, pe that the Lord is bringing these people toward us and to us, and we'll one day see them. We'll one day see their faces, and we'll one day know their names, but at the time we didn't. But we just counted on the fact that the Lord would be bringing these people to us, and, and they did, he did, and, and you did. You are the faces, and you are the names of the people that uh, we couldn't see at the time, but now we know. Now we know that who you are and how the Lord intended to bless us. Um, if I go back in time, I think about all of those blessings and a time in which the land itself was simply vacant. There was nothing on our property. And Jan and I walked through that property and prayed that the Lord would do a great work there, open up the opportunity to build, but also bring people into our congregation that we had yet to meet. And he answered that prayer. So it has been uh, just a glorious opportunity for us over those years to be involved in the Lord's work, to see what he was doing, and to see the people that are continuing to come in uh, to our congregation. And uh, we just praise God for that. So uh, if there's a prayer that I would pray for you, it's this, that the, uh, you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you can bear fruit in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God. We thank you for all that the Lord is doing and we, uh, we bless you and, and trust that the Lord's gonna uh, continue to lead our church forward in the years that come. Hi, my name's Ted Hartlett, and my wife, Ebel, and I have been at Walnut Hill for 30 years now. My favorite memory was when we worshiped together with the men at New Hope Baptist Church in Danbury. We'd have a uh, joint retreat with uh, that congregation, which is primarily African-American, and our congregation, and uh, getting all those guys together was truly amazing. Uh, my prayer for Walnut Hill going forward is that um, Walnut Hill would remain faithful to the gospel and would trust the Lord in all its ways. I'm Vicki Beatty, and I've been a member of Walnut Hill Community Church for over 37 years. And I'm very grateful for Walnut Hill's faithful and generous support of me as a missionary in both Zambia and South Sudan for 32 years. You've been faithful in financial support, praying for me and encouraging me. Some examples of how I've been encouraged by you include when people have come to the field to visit me, to see and participate in my ministry. Some of the founding members, Jean and Francis Shackelford, came to Zambia to visit me, as well as Pastor Joel and Sharon Eisness came for a visit with my parents. And there was even a very short-term team of just four people who came out and um, poured a slab for a teaching shelter for the Nutrition Village. And people thought Zambia was remote. Well, South Sudan is much more remote, and I uh, was very humbled and encouraged that Pastors Clive and Ruth Calver came out with my parents to see me. And it, it's really special to have people who've experienced what have I, I've, I have experienced and join me in the ministry. And you've con continued to support me while I'm at home for a season, to support my dad while I work on my master's in chaplaincy. And I'm still involved with the ministry um, from afar. But you've been faithful to continue to support me, but also prepare me 
for works and service. That's what one of the roles of the church is, to prepare people for works of service. And I've really enjoyed getting involved in the pastoral care ministry through visiting some homebound women as well as participating in um, the nursing home ministry. I've really enjoyed these and um, I just feel blessed to be part of this church. And my prayer for the 40 years ahead for us is that we will continue to ignite a passion for Jesus in Connecticut, New England, and around the world while we prepare people for works of service to, to show people the love of Christ.